Hello and welcome to The Gaggle, where we challenge and, if necessary, destroy media narratives. I'm Peter Lavelle. Um, I'm talking to George Samueli, a co-founder of this channel, and he's a writer and commentator as well. Uh, it, George, I, I, over the weekend, Brian Stelter kind of shocked the the, um, the media world with, and it's really difficult for him to shock the world because he's such a mediocre person. He's the, um, what is the court uh, um, uh, gesture over at CNN. Um, and he made it clear that he and his network would fact check uh, the Republican National Convention which of course begged the question, well, why didn't you fact check the Democratic convention? Of course he shows his bias, though he claims he is neutral. And that is, that's a complete fraud because CNN is extremely biased and uh, certainly uh, in the corner for uh, the uh, liberals and the Democratic party and the DNC here. We saw that in 2016. But, you know, it, it's one of those things that, you know, it makes you, think, you know, do the, don't do people like MSNBC and CNN and the Washington Post, New York Times and all the rest of them, they have no sense of self-reflection. I mean, they make complete buffoons out of themselves and they think they're being righteous, but it's just pure tomfoolery. Yeah, it is tomfoolery. Um, and of course, there were very many things at the Democratic Convention that could and should have been fact-checked. They weren't. Um, I mean, the most notable example was um, uh, Biden's statement um, towards the end of his speech in which he said that uh, Trump said that the, the Nazis, there were many fine people among them. The, the, pro the uh, issue uh, is uh, not uh, only uh, is this absolutely false, because uh, Trump, when he said about there were many fine people on both sides, he was talking something specifically, namely the people who came to demonstrate over this, the uh, dismantling of the Robert E. Lee statue. That's what he was referring to. He didn't say uh, that the Nazis were, were fine people. In fact, he explicitly said that white nationalists and uh, fascists are very bad people uh, and, <laughs> and should be condemned. But Biden has said this before. So it's not like, oh, he just was uh, just talking you know, through his hat. He said this, well, he said, the reason I got into this race was when I heard uh, Trump say that there were many fine people who were fascists. So he said this before. This is a classic case that, you know, you should fact check. I mean, there it is. Yeah, I, I get, I, you know, it, 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 it's, you know, it, it's really on the, on the same level of him getting arrested visiting Nelson Mandela, which he's told many, many times <laughs> right. as well. That's okay? it. That's it. Exactly. Um, uh, it's like, you know, Elizabeth Warren's powwow chow, okay? That's, uh, it, that's, that's it. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit. But Biden is somebody who is very much given to these um, uh, exuberances. Um, there was a very fa um, favorable, sycophantic, fawning profile of him in the New York Times a couple of months ago, which had him saying he, he went to some arms control meeting, met Brezhnev. This is in the late 70s. And he said to Brezhnev, hey, uh, don't bullshit a bullshitter. Now, you, I mean, I know you were around in the 1970s. Nobody, nobody talked to Brezhnev like that. A junior senator from Delaware would talk to Brezhnev in a way that neither Nixon nor Kissinger nor Ford would dare talk to him, Brezhnev like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, don't bullshit a bullshit. And, you know, and of course, you know, all these things can be multiplied. This is a guy who fell out of a, uh, dropped out of a race on account of plagiarism and you know, making ludicrous claims about his academic record, <laughs> like he was top of his class, whereas he was actually right at the bottom of his class. Yeah, this is a notorious, uh, you know, um, well, to use his terminology, a notorious bullshitter. And yet, he, they allowed him to uh, get away with it. And then, and then, what you were saying about this, for instance, uh, the CNN uh, refers to this um, this young man. Um, at, at Covington, the schoolboy at Covington, who was um, uh, going, who was going to be speaking at the Republican convention, and they just cryptically say, "Oh, he uh, sued uh, some networks um, over a, a video that went viral." Um, Nick Sandman. How about mentioning that one of the networks sued was CNN, and that CNN had to settle, and I'm sure that had, had to pay a pretty penny for essentially presenting a highly misleading account of uh, what happened with those Covington boys. Well, you know what CNN has really done, at least to, to you and I and our uh, future guests this week, is that not only do we have to critique the GOP, that we have to critique the media covering the GOP. Right. 
All right, I want to throw in another quick topic here um, because we, uh, this week is going to be really, very busy. I, I found it really quite curious that Senator Mark Warner has come out and warning um, uh, potential voters not to fall for Russian disinformation, okay, because they will become unwittingly involved in this here. And let me read to you what he had to say here. My fear is that uh, there may be Americans that are unwittingly promoting the Russian disinformation campaign. And I think they need to be briefed so they don't become, frankly, agents in effect of this different uh, disinformation campaign. I mean, essentially what it gets boils down to is that if you hear anything negative about Joe Biden, it's the Kremlin's fault. Again, this really weird sense of causality and logic. Yes, yes, that, that, exactly. And, but the Democrats have been playing uh, this game ever since 2016. Anytime um, anything unfavorable uh, emerges, un very unflattering to the Democrats, oh, it, this is Russian disinformation. And then again, the you know, fawning reporters don't say, well, even if it is, is it true? <laughs> I mean, so well, let, let's say, yeah, you, you're absolutely right. It was the Russians who provided this information. But... Is it true? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a journalist. I want to know whether it's true or not. But in fact, I don't. I mean, there's, there's a classic case of that um, um, uh, Nero you Tandon, know, who was a, you know, the classic um, uh, neoconservative, neoliberal hack uh, for the Democratic Party. Again, makes oodles of money. And she was confronted by some of the uh, disclosures from the uh, emails that uh, WikiLeaks published uh, in July, uh, how basically the Democrats... Uh, screwed over um, Bernie Sanders. And every time she was asked about this, she said, oh, I'm not going to, you know, talk about things that are just Russian propaganda. This is... This is yeah, just a but see, that was, that was really classic. I mean, and, and again, it's, it's only alternative media that focuses on it. Okay, we can discuss, and I, and I think it can be a lively debate, uh, about the appropriateness of private emails finding itself into the public uh, realm. That's an interesting discussion, but it's irrefutable what the email said, okay? Right. And nobody wants to talk about the substance of it. It's like Chris Cuomo, you can't read those WikiLeaks. <laughs> we can, though, and we'll tell you what it means. Like, I'm going to, you know, I wouldn't buy a used car from Chris Cuomo, okay? Right. I mean, again, you yeah. know, who... They're, what this, this whole campaign is trying to make potential voters into unwitting um, uh, um, uh, fo uh, followers of a, of, a, of a false narrative, okay? And, and it, again, you know, we can finish on this here. It, this is so condescending towards voters. And this, is, this happened and started in 2016, is that the left demonizes not you know, like Trump is beyond the pale so you don't even have to criticize them fine they've already done that but anyone that says anything that is slightly in favor or not completely against Donald Trump is demonized and it's well, that's what I found really de depressing about the DNC last week is that they 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 um, criticized and demean voters they had, they had no interest in ideas. Senator Warner's, he's not talking about any idea at all, any statements, okay? It's just that it's a blanket. If there, if it isn't completely negative, then you're somehow either duped or in cahoots. Yes, yes. I mean, it's funny what you mentioned about uh, Chris Cuomo, because, of course, it shows that Cuomo has absolutely no understanding of the Constitution. The First Amendment protects everybody. There isn't a special carve-out for journalists. Everybody is entitled to seek out information wherever information is to be found. I mean, that, it, that applies to everybody, you know, whether they're journalists, whether they collect refuse or work down in the sewer, whatever. So for, for Cuomo to suggest that only he, as an employee of CNN, has a right to look at those um, uh, WikiLeaks uh, emails, it just shows, you know, what a buffoon he is, how little he understands the Constitution. But this democratic attempt to bully uh, journalists and pretty much everybody else by saying, hey, Ooh, if you, uh, uh, report about uh, Biden's activities in Ukraine, you are serving Russian interests. Well, of course, Biden's activities in Ukraine, how uh, his son managed to snag a million dollars a year without having any qualifications.